that sort of writing to the register with you? Did you read it? Did you? No, I don't read terribly much, so which is quite helpful. You know, <laughs> so if you read too much about it, about uh, yourself or what other people are saying, you know, you become sort of a bit cynical about uh, how how things go, and you you can become bitter, you know. And what's the worst thing about uh, you know architects have become bitter art very good friends, you know. And so uh, the worst thing is to become bitter, you know. You know, I mean. Well, my my F was this marvelous burst of creativity. We were just um, steadily building. Um, about the same time, we started um, College House, Ashes College, and um, uh, worked for the university. Um, yeah. I was in the office when you started Ashes uh, House, and also the, the cre yeah, also the crematorium, which is an absolutely beautiful building. Not much more subsequent. College House is still standing. The College House is, uh, I think the is chapel amazing. Is probably our, our best, uh, best efforts. Mm. Um, but that was the basic approach there was that um, form would be generated by um, function, um, which sounds um, very constrictive, but it really wasn't. We, we, Warren and Marnie were best when we had a, uh, um, a unique function to and we were worse when it was just so much floor space in the office block. But fair to say it was in stable economic times, wasn't it? Pretty yes. Well. Yes. yes, yes. And one of the things, we sort of lost it uh, in the early 70s when uh, <coughs> inflation started moving but very, very quickly and uh, the developing mine came onto the scene and you know, they'd employ anyone to get the building up as quickly as they possibly could. But we, I remember the verse of Christ College being uh, something um, uh, Miles or Warren, um, well, actually I was Warren Minor, um, <laughs> would, you, would you like to work for the college? Um, oh, yes sir. Um, what's the project? Oh, it's a laboratory block, um, seven hollow, uh, no doors on the bottom, seven hollow, uh, no Well, it's, it's a start, man, it's a start. <laughs> And we worked for the next 40 years. <laughs> so at, at some point, or perhaps it was incrementally, your um, interpretation and opinion on F, um, on F's work changed considerably and you became, um, you've been a firm ally and supporter of, of F and of Fairfield Architects in Christchurch in particular. And I wondered if it was if it was a particular project or a particular point in time where that had happened or if it was just sort of incremental. Oh, I suppose finally when they got to the buck house, you know, I was just astonished. I mean, that, that I'm sure is in everybody's mind that um, magnificent building with the, the uh, vineyard running up to it and those white forms and so on. And, um, look, what can you say? Genius of the world. Genius. It's a beautiful place. Um, in the 1980s, Warren Amani and Athfield Architects both produced buildings that are now described as postmodern with oversized classical elements and symmetry and, and sometimes the use of metaphors. I'm interested to know how both of you feel about the 80s work now that you put in um, Whether you see it as part of a continuum from earlier work or whether you see a kind of juncture in, in that different work that emerged in the 1980s. Well, funny enough, um, we had the same car, didn't we? Graham Briggs. Right, we did. Okay. <coughs> the building is our entertainment. Yes, and, and the, um, what was it, uh, City Bank in, um, in, in Auckland. Auckland. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. influenced by the building further along. Mm. I think that uh, <laughs> <it's, laughs> <laughs> clients were also starting to be. Um, influenced by architectural magazines and uh, you know up to then uh, many um, people we worked for weren't been influenced at all except by your, your particular work you know and and so um, and offices you know as they increased in size you know it's it's not uh, Mars and I which continue to, to push the pencil it's the, a place of joint minds mm -hmm. and um, as um, as offices develop and overseas um, influences come, you're always affected by them. 
but today I suggest they're so diverse that uh, you know fashion uh, determined by age and time is probably not so important because there are so many ways of doing things. There are so many techniques of putting things together and there are so many materials available. It's really trying to get a certain number of restraint when you're actually working with some of these clients who want to actually use every material in the world or uh, you know, an influence by something which you actually have no respect for. So it's um, much different actually producing uh, unit buildings now than used uh, historically. Well, I remember um, Graham Brigham's, um, <coughs> I think he must have worked for 10 office buildings for us, in that order. Um, <coughs> we'd ring up and say, I'm coming down, I'll be at your office at uh, 10 past 8. I will give you instructions for a 14-story office building in Wellington. I have to depart at uh, 9.30 to catch a square. Um, will you produce the sketch plans in two weeks? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and we will be working drawings in six weeks? Yes. I mean, what else could I do? It was hugely profitable. But all you could do was regurgitate the modifications what you've done before. Because it was a mad, stupid world. If only we'd had more time. Uh, as I say, all, all you could do is repeat it make modifications of what I've done before. And the sort of run-up standard office block was the um, least interesting, least productive brief you could get really. And the best money. More great money. <laughs> <laughs> In 1994, you reached the age of 65 and there was the agreed retirement age that were in money. Yes. It seems topical given the recent focus on retirement ages. Was it too early? Was 40 years of practice enough? Uh, well, I continued uh, designing buildings yeah. thereafter. I mean, I did a, I had the pleasure of still continuing working for Christ College and we did a building a year. Because it, was, it was a great pleasure to get back onto the drawing board and not have improved and still was always carrying on and so on. So I could puddle along uh, and enjoy myself. So they done, and your name was still through the Royal Marine Office? No, just not my name. So it wasn't really your time? I think I was wickedly practicing without a appropriate certificate. I'm not sure it was I. So I have to suspect that you um, marked the time of the 1904 with an exhibition of four decades of now, there, there was a particular reason for that exhibition. I had been um, 10 years on the, as a trustee of the Arts Foundation. And the Arts Foundation uh, made five awards of 30,000 a year to artists each year. So 50 awards had been made to artists and not one to an architect. And that, that has always really, uh, um, you know, the arch architecture is, is the mother of the arts. You could take all the paintings out of uh, I'm sorry, Jenny. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the price of tobacco. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and the public would never know for a year, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't take our whole built environment. That's what architecture is about. It is the mother of the arts. And to have made no award to architecture. In so not one in fifty. We give them awards to put this in the end, I suppose. I, I still keep hacking away. So um, to have the actual exhibition, Jenny, which you so kindly supported uh, at the um, Christchurch Arts Gallery, was really to say, look, um, architecture is an art, and it had a wonderful turnout in numbers, mm -hmm. as this would. And if you look around the walls of the, of the gallery out there, those working drawings themselves are works of art. And it's one of the pleasures of the old drawing system. The, the, the architect or the draftsman and the staff made a drawing. It was his or hers. You know. You could identify each drawing and you could discount it and um, know who had done it. They, they were uh, works of craft and art, and, and um, that's 
well displayed in the exhibition here. Mm. The only design drawings in architecture are the working drawings. It's the way that you put things together. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's not those beautiful perspectives that you use in the first place because it's the way we put things together. And I've been really, really lucky because I'm a small part of a fairly large sort of firm who've let me retire gently, mainly because they might have been frightening me. But, you know, years ago, because when I worked for Structon Group, I became a partner in uh, 1965. And my first um, task was, well, I thought my first task was, was to, reduce, uh, to introduce a retirement policy for the rest of the partners. Uh, <laughs> which didn't go down terribly well, and I was subsequently dismissed from the practice on uh, the 15th of July 1968. And uh, that was on my birthday. And so um, I went out and gained uh, quite a few of their clients in the afternoon. And then the bailiff came round at half past five at night, and the, the practice started like that. So uh, I've been lucky over the last seven years, I've been slowly reducing the amount of work and my uh, office has accepted it. And uh, now it's, uh, it's in you know, the helm and the tiller is in, in the hands of others. Uh, and um, I'm really happy to be part, a small part of that organisation. And probably will never actually still start drawing uh, by myself because I don't need to, you know. I just have to finish some of those questions I've asked the last 40 years and, and provide some answers, especially to my family. <laughs> Just going back, uh, I first worked in, um, as a uh, um, student in Cecil Woods office and the first thing I did was to um, practice lecturing and um, that was to draw parallel lines evenly spaced. Then you could grade up to doing C's. <laughs> and the C's had to go up the above the line, and I'm done with this above the line. Wouldn't go to my drawing and said, It's very immature, Miles. I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we, but we would build what well, in, in craftsmanship. And I always found that if one really got stuck with the design, wasn't getting anywhere, I simply had to set to on the drawing board and very similar to when when I started working for you, Miles, I drew the first wall on the drawing and my boss came over and said, What's that wall? A block wall? And I said, No, it's a timber frame wall. He said it's um and this was eighth scale and he said, It's six inches thick and <laughs> and the framing walls are four inches thick. Draw it again, lad. <laughs> <laughs> Of <laughs> and you've also marked the four decades of African architects with a, I understand, a big party at the Embassy Theatre. Yeah. Tell us about that one. That was great too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, um, it, it was um, a, a film which uh, was made, um, which was really important. Uh, Jeff Cawthon and um, uh, Richard Rutherford uh, just made a film about uh, the uh, practice of uh, athletics, you know, and um, just living on the hill and working on the hill, and um, just demonstrating that it is a practice of a whole lot of people working together, uh, which I've had some influence in, but uh, you know, and but uh, you know, there are some very very good people, which I feel good about uh, leaving. So, great party, it's always a good to have in the party. I wouldn't mind another really good one like that before I die. So, uh, <laughs> and even the better one after I die, which would be uh, important to have. <laughs> and we're writing the film as running in the reading room during the exhibition upstairs. Very good. Yeah. yeah. There was a much lesser film on um, Ron and Marty when I was um, finally coaxed into the chapel. That, uh, Church College, and we would have been quite well, I thought. And he finally just turned to me and he said, Do you believe in God? <laughs> I said, um, No. And I said, Well, you know, here I was in the chapel, right, which I designed, and I said, I didn't believe in God. And he, he produced it in the film, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always the question they ask you in the end. You know, I mean, I've been asked that a number of times. And it makes it quite difficult, especially when it's asked by the Bishop of Christchurch. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know you're on the right track. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you're on the loser when you say no 